Daddy Squared. Gay Dad Saved the World. A daily dose of gay dads on the front lines of the global pandemic. With Alex McGann and Jan Dick. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Gay Dads Save the World, Daddy Squared podcast. Alex, how are you? I'm okay. Really? Um, are you sure? I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you too. I'm worried about everybody. Guys, if you are bored and don't have anything to do, why don't you make a little bit of money? Because it sounds like an infomercial. <laughs> it's not, actually. Uh, I found a little bit of a hobby. Well, it's been a hobby of mine for a while. This is such bull. This is not <laughs> a hobby of my husband. This is his burning passion. Go it's on. My, all right. So it's been for a while like that. Um, it's uh, selling things on eBay and Craigslist. Now, I found that recently... You can't sell anything on Craigslist because nobody is coming to buy them from you, actually. But right. on eBay, things are going very well. Now, if you have something that you want to sell at home, that it feels like you don't use it anymore and it's kind of... Like your taking, husband. It, ta- it takes some, too much space in, in the house, like your husband, and you want to sell it. The key ingredient for, for selling a, a thing on eBay is the picture. So make sure that the picture is good. You take a picture like a glamorous, you know, with the light. Usually in the morning, I take pictures in the mornings or in the afternoons with the, with the outside light. It, it comes out really, really good. And then, you know, you can sell it. So I sold. I don't make a lot of money, but it's a good thing to do. Yeah, I mean, and, and my husband can sell like belly button lint. My, my husband can package up things. I see him putting things in, you know, in big envelopes that you would just not imagine a person could sell, but he does. Yeah, because I, I believe there's, people need it. If you needed it and bought it, other people need that too. Wanted it. I don't, you know, the what? plastic Britney Spears cup that we have. Oh my God, that's going to be selling for like 40 bucks. Uh, now, Well, why don't you get on that? Because I'd like that thing out of our house seriously? as soon as possible. No, I, I'm waiting for it to... to... <laughs> oh my God, no, stop. <laughs> Um, anyway, so just an idea. If you guys are a little bit bored, this is something fun to do. And you'd be amazed for how little of a work it is and how much people are, you know, buying stuff. In related note, today we're calling a USPS worker. Oh, How's right. That? that makes perfect sense. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm giving him a job. Uh, Eric Maisel, he's a, he works, he's a manager at, uh, at the Postal Services. And he has five kids with his husband, James. Uh, all of them, all of the kids are over 20 years old and they left the house already, which I thought it's, a, it's an interesting angle, Alex, for you know, gay dads with kids, but not, they don't have to entertain them, entertain them. Nevertheless, they worry about them. Of course, yeah. So uh, we talked to, talk to Eric and, uh, and James have joined the conversation. Let's hear it now, okay? Right. All right. Oh, he lives in Georgia. Did I say that? I don't think so. Okay. Hello, Eric. Howdy. How you doing? Okay. It sounds like things have settled down in terms of your microphone. Everything is good? I think so. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Yeah, so uh, so first of all, tell us uh, about your work and how has it changed during the pandemic? I work as a supervisor with the Postal Service here in Georgia. Um, for the most part, everybody's coming to work, doing what they have to do. You know, there is some glitches here and there because it has gotten to the, be where they're a little leery and scared. Because, you know, we're, we're dealing with every house in the neighborhood. Right. You know, there's folks that we know who are positive, mm-hmm. but they're still being delivered mail to. Yep. Yep. But we're taking precautions to do that, such as, you know, not touching the mailbox or wearing the gloves. And in fact, we just got cloth masks today uh, for us to take home. And we got like five of them. And it's mandatory now that we actually wear the masks while we're at work. Does that mean that there are no aspects of your operation as the post office that have changed? Meaning, I as a customer in Georgia, or I guess here in in California, in either, California, I, same thing, huh? Okay, so I wouldn't I wouldn't expect any differences in availability and even like how long it takes things to get there. With there has holes? been some changes on that. I see. 
And in most cases, priority mail, the delivery standards are two to three days, not guaranteed. Uh -huh. But they changed that to three to four days. And the reason why is because being nationwide, I don't know, uh, you know, like downtown Atlanta, we, you know, we have four different big processing facilities. Uh -huh. and, and a lot of folks don't come to work because they do a self-quarantine. In other right. words, they don't want to have the t or take the chance of being exposed. Sure. And so what we're having to do is use a, uh, more time to get the, uh, the, the, the product pro uh, processed. We're hiring annuitants, which is folks that have retired. We're asking some of them to come back to work. Oh, wow. Yep. Are a lot of them excited to get a call saying, hey, we need you back for a while? Some of them don't, but some of them do. They miss that, that it's just like the camaraderie, it's just the, you know, and, and, and missing being active because it's a very active job. It's not like you sit there and right. it's, yeah. it's physical. It can be physical and mentally physical or mentally exhausting too. Well, you know, look, it's fun. I was really happy when Jan, um, uh, told me that we were going to be interviewing you because I feel like it's it's so meaningful to discover how many different careers there are that qualify as essential that you don't necessarily think about until something like this goes on. And the idea that we have a connection to the world through the work that you do that would simply that would simply stop were it not for that. Eric, it's amazing. Do, Eric, do you feel that there's uh, more mail now during the COVID or less? no? Not at all. It's it's the mail volume has actually dropped. Uh, although you but guys, I, I can tell you one thing. Yeah. You know, it's not stopping customers from coming to the window and uh, mailing a piece of mail. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but, yeah, it's interesting, but it's but but the the amount of mail that we've been getting lately has been not significantly less, but it it makes a difference. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about your family. Uh, you know, this is a gay dad's podcast. Tell us a little bit about who you got. Well, I, I was married to my wife for 11 years. My partner was married to his wife for 17 years. Okay. It was a little different. I was closeted. He was not. He let his wife know right up front what the whole deal was. So you both got married separately. And uh, then when you guys got together, you ended up with a total of five kids, right? James, how many of them did you bring to the family? You know, I've always had the kids with me, but I've always, I had two of them on my own, you know, way before I met Eric until I met Eric. And then we combined the family. I had a little bit Brady Bunch, but in a much gayer way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, his, his daughter at the time was 15 and his son was 16. And my kids were, like I said, at this time about nine and 11. Oh, all right. Did so they you get know. along right away? Uh, sort of, sort of not. not. Yeah. Um, I came from my, my in-laws at the time were very Christian, uh -huh. very judgmental. But one thing about James and I is that we treated our kids as our kids. Never as his or mine. And they're right. ours. Uh, you know, if I had an issue with Forrest, I would go to Forrest or I would go to Paris. Mm -hmm. If he had an issue with, and of course, you know, my two girls didn't live with us at the time, but once Kaylee moved in with us, you know, if James had an issue with Kaylee, then he would run to Kaylee. Yeah. There was an issue one time where there was, you know, Paris would go to James, Kaylee would come to me about issues between them two. And it kind of got into the little bit wedged in between us. And I said, wait a minute here. And I don't know whether you said it or I did. I said, we're arguing over an issue that doesn't even pertain to us. It pertains to those two kids. And so we got back to the house and we said, come in the living room. We're going to have a talk. And we said to them right then and there, Kaylee, if you have an issue with Paris, you go to Paris. Don't come to me. It's not my problem. You're a big girl now. You can take care of that part. Paris, same thing goes for you. If you have a problem with Kaylee, you need to deal with it with Kaylee. And I kind of thought, think that that kind of, it, it, it made some, a little bit more of a blended family, you know, where it was like, you, you got to treat her like your sister, whether you like her or not. <laughs> Right. Um, but the funny thing was, is that Paris would always say, you know, I could say something bad about her because she's my sister. Right? <laughs> but yes. if anybody yeah. else says anything bad about her, you're going to have to answer to me. 
Listen, um, yes. uh, so I want to ask you now, they're both, they're all of them, all five of them are out of the house, right? They're, they're grown up. Yes. They're all out. Mm -hmm. How do you guys keep in touch with them during this time? Like, uh, do you FaceTime them? Do you, I, I'm sure you're worried, you're worried <laughs> a lot about them. Uh, well, our son, he lives closest to us. He moved back up from Savannah up close to where we're at. He comes down and visits and, or he'll call or text or whatever but the other ones one lives in texas one lives in colorado one lives in san francisco and the other lives in australia wow so all all of that is through facetime um you know phone calls all that stuff how often i mean how often quite a bit i mean you know quite a bit because we also have two grandbabies now oh, oh. congratulations do you guys yes, do and one on the way another one on the way so wow. We're very excited about that. Have you guys done any uh, group things like Zoom meetings or anything like that with the family? You know, we haven't. No, we Actually. haven't because the time the time difference is so hard between Australia and California and Colorado and Texas and here. Despite this pandemic, are there any silver linings that you've been experiencing during this lockdown and, and everything else? <laughs> Well, but it's, but it's just our normal everyday life, and nothing's changed here at the house. I really? Mean, right. We like to do things at home. We like to do projects. We just finished redoing the cupboards in the kitchen, sanding them down, you know, doing, uh, repainting them, yard, uh, yeah, the yard work. Wow. In the house. I mean, we do a lot of that stuff together. I mean, we al almost every moment of our spare time, we're never, there's never a time where it's like, well, hey, I'm going to go hang out with so-and-so and I'll see you later. Well, I have to tell you, my husband and I have to have to learn some things from you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gentlemen. So, uh, he's, he, is he Jewish? Both of us are Jewish. Yeah. Oh, excellent, because hey, I'm a shit guy. he's a shit guy. Oh, oh well, that's, that's all right. You know what? They're really good looking, the Shiksas are. Don't worry. Yeah, that's <laughs> Listen, gentlemen, uh, I have to ask you really the most important question and final question of our interview, which is this. Over the course of this lockdown and this pandemic, I would like the two of you to confess to the worst food you have eaten during this time. Oh, honey, I'm going to tell you something right now. Drink there's there. never oh, any God. worse food in our house. No. There's never what? There's never any worse food in our house. Oh, so you guys only eat healthy even during this global pandemic with all this crazy. <laughs> no, but he can turn a damn hot dog literally into some gourmet meal. I, I, can, <laughs> I don't, this is Eric and I don't cook. I tell you that right now. Okay. I cook. So I leave that I'm, all up I'm to James. Curious. On how to how to turn a hot dog to a gourmet meal. Yeah, might as well tell us how do you make yeah, a hot dog gourmet and with it from there. <laughs> well, you know, you, as long as you got a barbecue grill, you can you know you can grill it, saute it, you know, saute it, then grill it out there, you know, or you got garlic powder, powder and you got, you got onion spices, powder and you can cut it up and you can add it into anything, any vegetables, any pasta dish, anything. <laughs> You know, add some pasta sauce or, you know, it's like a shushuka with, you know, eggs and weenies. I yes. love that our interview just turned into a cooking show. Uh, <laughs> guys, listen, we we cannot thank you enough for taking the time to interview with us. And also, of course, for seeing to it that the mail goes through because it matters an awful lot for all of us to stay connected. So thank you so much for thank doing you. it. Thank you, Eric. And yeah, thank thanks you. for thank you. Uh, giving us the opportunity. I appreciate that. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, bye. bye. That is clear.